Okay, let's get back to these. Uh, I want to get into the accessories yeah. a little bit because some people are going to be interested in this. Marco, I know you're light on accessories, which is fine too. You know, I mean, there's, again, there are scenarios where you're going to need accessories if this is your primary oh, yeah. camera, you know. Right, yeah, so uh, I, I'm going to want your opinion on some of this. So um, what I'm holding here, we're making, we're making these right now. So I, I just have a print that's mounted to this camera right now. We've 3D printed this. And I have the SSD drive mounted to the top because in our survey, we discovered that a lot of people wanted a way to mount this. Now, you don't have to mount this here. And then it's even a smaller profile. So that can come off. Yes. It, it, this comes off with a twist of this and a pull of this. Let's see if I can do it with this print. I don't know if I can do that so quickly right now. There we go. There you go. Okay. But this, this part on top is also separate. Okay? Yeah, so that can come off. So that mm -hmm. can come off and you have a completely flat top. All right. Well, wait, so, talk about that flat top because that's something that's unique to you. Yeah, um, well, uh, a flat top is not completely unique to me, but it is when you have a Z rail yeah, or well, NATO that, rail built into it. You gotta have it. that. Okay. So now, but I think we're the only ones that do a NATO rail. Let me catch the light just right here. Um, that is not only flat here, but going fore and aft. Okay, and we think that's important because it helps you in balancing the camera if you're holding it from the top with, let's say, quite large lenses on it, or or battery on the back or whatever it may be, I can slide this to the position where the balance is, you know, where it needs to be. Like in this case, look, I'm mounting it way up front and the balance is just about perfect centered for this lens. Absolutely. Okay. Right, but yep. when you put that big beefy lens on there, that thing's gonna need to flip around and go the other way. I can, yeah, and you can do that. So, but, so having Z-Rail going, like a lot of guys do, going this way doesn't help you at all no, that way. No, it doesn't do the, anything, The side actually. to side is, is, is kind of dumb. Um, now here's a scenario that like, for instance, with this camera and Marco, you're going to, you're, you've been a shooter for a long time. So you'll be able to verify that I'm not bullshitting everybody, <laughs> but a very common shot that we like to do. And I showed you a gorgeous one yesterday. Remember that with that guy in the fog and everything, I wish I would have, hmm. uh, have that put on screen, but a lot of low mode stuff is very common that we like to do. We were even on a film, uh, that, uh, James Brown uh film where they were shooting a lot of box actually young kid boxing scenarios right. where they were holding low mode shots so if that thing is not balanced in low mode you're going to be it, it you're going to be doing this sort of mm -hmm. thing it's going to be tipping down and up and you know balance to us is critical we have this conversation every it's just, oh yeah we start from a balanced scenario yep. you know now, i might be getting a little ahead Absolutely. of uh myself but um while we're talking about the handle the other benefit of this handle is if you are using this on your shoulder which i'll pop on some of the other stuff in a minute then you need the evf and that is where the evf will mount off the end and then of course it's adjustable so that you can get it to where your eye is yeah i uh, see from the side so our evf would mount on a little loop thing that comes with us here uh, in this correct position. Otherwise, yeah. you've got too far to travel to mount an EVF properly. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else can quite do that the same way. Uh, so that's, yeah, so that's the top handle scenario. The The rest of the uh, top of the cage is flat in case you want to mount Z-Rail in other directions. Like the other day, I mounted one going horizontally so that I could put a rod loop coming out if you want to mount a motor on here mm. without using the rods from the bottom, which that's we can cool. do too. Um, the strap thing I love. Yeah, man. the we, side strap now that I see other people yeah. are catching on to that uh, yeah. after we st yep. started to do that but um, is is critical. The other thing, um, because you, you, what you can do is you can have a lighter grip on the camera when you got that extra safety of having the strap on the side. You know what I mean? I don't have to death grip it as much and it's also an you know it's it's mm -hmm. it's a nice little kind of way to hang on to it <laughs> yeah i call that parade rest remember when you had a beta cam and you just let the thing sort of fall <laughs> to the side like this when you were resting right. between right. shots it's that it's that aren't hand fatigue now you know it's parade rest right. and then oh here we go we're ready to go now i'm seeing uh, a few other yep. companies starting to put this on there but they they didn't consider one thing which uh, we've been doing for a while oh great you're giving that away okay is, go for it <laughs> is that well they're gonna they're gonna see it anyway is that when you're holding it and you're holding it up high you have to twist your hand okay and so that's why i have this kind of longer extension here to get the top of this pad back and the bottom of it forward so that you can actually twist your hand and hold it on the grip properly like you know and be able to get to the trigger and all that and the other controls yeah it's interesting you got like multiple slots in there for depending where you want it yeah the other one would be for if somebody wants the camera strap that goes over the top you know oh, but, oh or I you see. can adjust okay. it where you want you know what I now mean? what's this inner one in case you want to get it a little bit more this forward 
you know, or, or for the camera strap that, to go over your neck. Yeah, wow, I don't great. know many people that are going to do it, but it's there for that, and that's why there's one on the other oh, side. Oh, no, we well. get a lot of that. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, uh, there's so many of these interesting camera strap options now where the slings and all this sort of stuff that if you're... Oh, yeah, right. It, 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 hell, man, you could be a nature photographer. Well, you're running around Europe. That would be awesome. Well, uh, one advantage to the neck strap that I don't know many people realize is that if you have it on your neck and yeah. you pull forward, it's another way to stabilize it. You know, and it's another sort of, um, it's not a point of contact, but it's a, it's a, it's a pressure point. Yeah, I guess. totally. I mean, you know I've mean? done it that way. Have you ever shot like that, Marco? Yeah, a little bit. I think like back in the, the 5D video days with the Mark II, I did a little bit of that. It's that pressure you have, so it doesn't feel so jittery. It's yeah. kind of a point of resistance. Yeah. You need, you need to have some of that. Otherwise you're going to have, well, I take that back. It depends what look you're going for. If you want that like frenetic feel that adds energy to the scene then you don't want that you kind of want a little bit of this kind of movement um that that mm -hmm. moves with your body naturally right. or you know the shoulder is a much more subdued version of being a viewer of the scene that can either be rock solid depending on how good you are or it can have a little bit of of, of movement right. often we're, we're kind of adding a little movement to give it a little so the point is, we have the strap holes for it. We got everything, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the other uh, feature I want to point out, if you can cut to my close-up, is that we never liked to put metal on this side of the cage. Uh, most of the time, there's, you know, your, your cards are going there, in there or whatever, but I also don't like to interrupt the natural shape that the camera has for gripping it by adding extra metal that's between your hand and the camera. Yeah, it's not comfortable. And, and there's, really, there's really no need for it. I, I have a vertical uh, brace that goes here. That, that's, and plus, this camera, a great feature about this camera is that you can also screw a cord 20 in from the top. Oh, God, which thank is a, you. Which is really <laughs> a great feature. <laughs> Unlike most uh, mirrorless cameras, it's only from the bottom, and we've attached in different ways. To, well, actually, to the, the, the cool thing about some of these mirrorless cameras, surprisingly, and, and I'm going to back up one second. This camera has a fabulous hand grip. It really is mm -hmm. ergonomically beautiful for your hand. Yeah, well, that's what partly the size, the larger mm -hmm. size is helping you in that respect. You know but what, what I mean? I've noticed is, is that now many of these, what I'm going to call mid-size cameras, like an FS7 or <clears> the Ursa Mini or some of these kinds of cameras, they're, the, they're, they're just not really great at figuring out how to have multiple screws and all this kind of stuff mm. because when you take a follow focus to almost any one of these cameras mm -hmm. that lens is going eh, 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 yeah, like the bottoms that. are a little on the soft side for just that one point and then shockingly <laughs> when you have these two screw holes or how you mount with through these eye hooks of some of these other yeah. uh, mini cameras right. uh, you get a stability that is beyond what you'd get. It, it's getting up there with a with a airy, mm -hmm. you know. Because actually, I take that back. I don't even like the stability of that camera. Uh, but the point <laughs> is, is the multiple screw holes. Thank you so much for that. I take that over a B and C. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty high. All right. Well. <laughs> Moving on. Yes. <laughs> that was a nice <laughs> diatribe there, but anyway. So uh, where did I leave off? Okay, so this is open uh, for our side, and it's, I wouldn't consider this a half cage. Like some, some companies do a half cage where everything just stops right here uh, to leave that open, but uh, uh, we wanted to carry it fully to the other side to help protect the corners of the camera because part of a cage is protection of your camera. So we still have that, but we don't have that metal interrupting your, your hand position. Uh, moving to this side, uh, I have there's two there's two bars here. This one is also NATO rail or Z rail as we call it, and so that you can put on. Let me grab it over here, so you can put on our side handle that actually I believe in this package as well is going to come with the cage as part of it. Okay, top handles uh, extra, side handle. Some of this hasn't been decided yet, but the side handle will most likely come with it. All right, so now you can adjust this in any position, um, as well as mount other accessories there. I have another cool actual ball. We call don't we call this the Zarn? Yeah. Is that the name of it now that yeah. we just that we just released? Clinton Harn sort of showed us this thing. Yeah. That, uh, it's kind of cool actually. He it's just another way of operating it. So again, if you're, you know, he he does this interesting move. He, he's got a video 
that he's going to show the technique of using it. But anyway, the point is that this is an accessory rail here, a NATO rail on the side that you can mount any number of, uh, uh, of uh, accessories to. Uh, the other important thing that everybody, of course, is wanting is ways to hold the cables in uh, to the camera so they don't get yanked or, or damage the camera or any of that. And there's two things I'm looking at right now. There's uh, clamping it relatively traditionally um, coming straight out. The problem with that is that most of these cables have large plastic ends that stick out quite far, but it still clears the handle on the side. The other option I'm looking at is doing the right angle where it comes back. I mean, it'll stick back now a little bit, but it's a little bit cleaner in a way and doesn't stick out too far to the side. Um, now, you're talking about for the, uh, a right angled HDMI. And the, um, the USB for the SSD drive, both. Okay. Those are the two that really need to be clamped. Yeah, you got a right angle. Those the things. HDMI is either going to a monitor or it could be going to another recorder. I don't, with this camera, it's probably not as necessary, a little less necessary if that glitches. But the SSD drive, you don't want to, to have glitch if you're using that. So um, that's another thing I wouldn't mind getting people's opinion on, whether they'd rather right angle back. Now, if we design the loop for it, then that's an issue because you can't hinge open that way. But, you know, maybe I, maybe I develop both options. I don't know. I'll, but we'll if have it's to on your shoulder, that. you have to have the right angle. Yes, and, and when I put that on, you'll see in a minute. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's probably the route to go. I don't know. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, you haven't really used it in this way that much, but from your other experiences. Well, I've used... I, the, the original uh, Blackmagic cameras, I actually did kind of configure them in ENG style um, quite mm -hmm. extensively, actually. Mm -hmm. Used a lot of your guys' products and stuff. And so, yeah, I would say if you want to do kind of a shoulder mount rig with the pocket, uh, the, the right angle is key. And that's what I always did. All, all the connectors I had, HDMI or, you know, whatever, um, that was, they, they were all right angle. So they go away from, obviously, yeah. the side of the face. Right. Okay. That's kind of what I and thought. You, and, 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 and to go to, to add a point too, I think having the, the, the cable lock screws on there is also key. I mean, you, you hit it on the mark there. For me, a cage really, uh, I, I do use cages with, with other cameras and whatnot. And, and to me, you've hit the mark. It's, it, for me, all of my cameras have to have a top handle on it. And like you said, it's gotta be fore and aft, depending on the balance of the lens or lack thereof of a you know, a small pancake lens or a big, huge zoom lens, whatever it may be. The, the um, uh, wrist band brace thing, I, for lack of a better term, awesome. I love that. So I think the three points having the, the wrist uh, band on there, the top handle option, and the cable tie locks on there, that's, that's totally it. Besides basic protection of the corners of the camera. Right. Well, I mean, and that, the mount for right. the uh, speed booster. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm getting to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting to that. So anyway, I don't know if, <laughs> in the close-up here, guys, I don't know if you can see. Um, so back here, I have this kind of unique pincher thing. So you pinch it closed and you screw this shut, and it's holding your cables that are coming out the right angle. All right, so that's, that's the form that this is in right now. And I think that, uh, you know, it's going to depend on what we do with the Z Finder and how it hinges, whether you use this or not. So we'll get into that. So send in your opinions on that, people listening. I appreciate it. So moving around to the front, and you were talking about speed boosters earlier. We've always incorporated the mount for the speed booster bracket, which is not on here at the moment, um, on the cage itself. A lot of companies put it on the rod mount section that that you put below. I don't know if you can see it right there. Um, but that's not great because you might still want your speed booster on and not have all that rod rigging underneath. So mm -hmm. with, with, this, mm -hmm. with yep. our cages, all our cages, you mount that, that support for the Metabones right here. And of course you need nice. support for the Metabones because even the Metabones adapter in this mount will shift with turning the focus ring or whatever it may be. So you need to to make that solid, and of course, you well, know, you're probably putting a way. beefier lens on the second you use that exactly. meta bones, and that right. this camera right. can't support that. Exactly right. So, so that hey, is Jens, part of the case. We've got a question yes. here from Roberto who says that with the cage, could it still be easily mounted on a gimbal? Yeah, I believe so. If it's stripped down, and you don't have a lot of this other stuff on there. It's not much bigger than the camera itself. It's maybe you know half an inch around. Uh, and it may make it easier, actually, quick, more quick releasable. Because uh, why don't I get to the bottom of this? 
Uh, this is using a, there's a built-in wedge here, and it's Arca Swiss style, so it's compatible with Arca Swiss uh, mounts and things like that. So we've made now an ecosystem for our small uh, cages and cameras that use that style. And here I'm going to switch pieces here. This base here you can see accepts the Arca Swiss um, plate in it. Okay. Well, it, it doesn't really look like it is kind of because it, it kind of snaps in. Yeah, it snaps in. Why don't I just do that? Right yeah, now? it. You, know, you got a lot of parts here. Yeah, I know I do. Got a lot of parts here. Hang on one sec. So, um, getting back to that guy's uh, what's his name? Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, his question. Um, yeah, I think it'll work well on that, and it's quick releasable using this Arca Swiss style connection. Now, remember, this is a print, so. Got to make sure that's on but good. But there's also a very thin, tiny little Arca Swiss plate that we make. And you'd screw that thing onto a tripod, onto a slider, mm -hmm. onto a gimbal, and you could just snap the camera from all these different things. There's no screws or anything you would need to do. Yeah, this will need its own video to explain it, but that, that little... Uh, <laughs> that little dock essentially <laughs> is actually in this rod block here yeah right and it's removable you can you can move it to other items yeah but we can get into that later but this uh, essentially allows you to have now rods and use it more traditionally now I have the shoulder pad that'll go right onto the bottom here and I didn't bring the EVF down but now essentially you can see where you need the right angles to kind of clear your head and, and go ahead and show them how you can slap that battery right on the back there to give you that right counterweight. Right. Although this thing's so damn light, you probably don't even need it. So off, off here <laughs> is where you'd have the EVF and you'd be ready to go. I should probably show a profile, but... That looks great. You totally see it. Yeah. And of course, um, we got our awesome grips here. You ought to try some of these nice. if you don't already have them. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, why don't you send Marco a pair and get his opinion on them. <laughs> um, and then Those you nice. put the battery here. You just snap that on which is nice. Now you got your counterbalance and you got real power. Yeah, so this is a way to get a lot of extra power to this camera uh, by using yeah. uh, one of the gripper batteries that we sell on the back here. Love you know, those. With the battery things. adapter that goes into the bottom here. Or, I don't know, uh, there might be a cable that can use this, totally. the, mini, uh, the mini plug on the side. But either way, um, this is a nice little package now. Again, if it's your, if you need to go shoulder and this is your camera, um, this well, is the way to do it. Well, then show how quick you can pop that off and you can go Gorilla now. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, it's essentially just a pull of this. Well, you, I, I could have even have to You're right. I could, I, could, I could have left that on and just popped this off. Yeah, and, and then you could just literally just go be, go between shoulder. Now, this is all printed, so he's got to be delicate. Yeah. Uh, yeah you, but I'm pretty much back to gorilla style now. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of a really you, cool system. Even this, nice. even this, you know, the top handle comes off quickly. A lot of people's top handles, you got to screw into different positions, and it's not quick releasable. I mean, you got to also think about packing this stuff up. When you're packing it in a small case, you want to be able to remove a lot of these things fast right. and drop it in, and, it, and you can end up with a much smaller case. Uh, let's see, what else? I love else? those hand grips. That's awesome. Uh, thanks. Um, Rachel see. will send you a pair. Uh, We've got, um, Jens, I think I've uh, Victor's asking if it feels <laughs> like it's pushing against your face too much because the camera is too wide. Say that one more time. Um, Victor wants to know if it feels like it's pressing against the side of your face too much because the camera is wide. Um, personally, I like, and this sounds like I'm just saying this, but I like when my face is touching the side of the camera because I feel like more solid and, and, and with it. It's not like something's jabbing me. It felt like the pad, this flat part here, was resting on the side of my face. It was touching it. Uh, you can't deny it. I mean, the ergonomics of this camera are what they are. It's, it's a wide camera. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, the trick, though, if you're going to use it that way, is you're going to have to um, right angle it so that you don't have the, the cables poking into your face. Here, it was just a sort of nice flat, soft area here that was resting against my head, which, again, I like because then I'm one with the camera. I, dude, I remember you know when I mean? you used jiggling. to use the beta cam, they put a leather pad there. Yeah, they have pads on their cameras. And you remember yeah. how they used to have a little headphone speaker yeah. right, right built in? Yeah. And yeah. He, you used to always comment on how you loved having that thing touch your well, face. Well, because I wedge it all together and then I'm one yeah. piece with it. You know? Right, so, exactly. So this, is, yeah. Uh, Victor, Marco's going, yeah, was yeah, that, yeah, he remembers. Was that, was that Victor's comment? <laughs> Yeah, it was Victor's it was comment. Vic yeah, Victor, you're right. It was touching here, but it, not in a bad way. So, 
That's that answer. <laughs> so I think I've covered most of the features on, on this camera. The battery door, of course, can still open, no problem. Uh, with the cage on, uh, that's expected these days. Oh, we, we do have uh, most of the screws that, that uh, you'll use to tie the camera down, um, top and bottom, and uh, let's see, oh, for the, um, for the Metabones adapter, use an eighth inch hex wrench, which will be magnetized to the bottom here in the hidden slot. Oh boy, look at that. So that, 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 uh, <laughs> that's part of it as well. It's just to keep it as, uh, with just as few a tools as you need and with the camera so that you can move fast. Um, I think I've covered just about all the features. I mean, there's a lot of little things that uh, people will find. It was very light. Um, Compared well, the, the, to the most camera's cages. extremely light. So, Marco, yeah. I want to I want to let you wrap this out. Uh, any other comments about this camera? Uh, we never really talked about you know it's dual native ISO, which is a pretty big feature for this camera. So it's really really awesome in low light, which I think a lot of users that are coming from the DSLR kind of background they they kind of want that, that low light ability. Um, so it's got the, the dual native ISO. And what's cool about it is that if you swap between the low setting and the high setting, it's all seamless. Um, some cameras, there's kind of a, a like a reboot process to toggle between the two uh, voltages or whatever. But with this camera, it's you're just sliding the wheel and it, it seamlessly goes between them. So that's that's really cool. Um, the 4K, it's true 4K. It's DCI, uh, which is nice. Uh, it's got anamorphic modes, which um, goes up to about 3K just because of the resolution of the sensor itself. So it's got a lot of stuff packed into this camera, which, you know, if the per like I said earlier, if, the, if there's a person out there where it's like, it's their one do-it-all camera, uh, this is great. I mean, for the price, ProRes, RAW, Blackmagic RAW, uh, everything else that has in it, it's, it's a pretty sweet deal. And we're going to help them do it all with this cage. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep. All right, Rachel, we're sending yep. it to you. <laughs> Thanks, Marco. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Marco, and thank you, everybody, for watching and for commenting. Uh, big thank you to ICANN, who provide all the lighting for our shows, and to our other sponsor, Road Mics. Just a reminder about our holiday gift boxes that are running right now and through the end of the year. Um, you can get free gifts like sliders, lights, a Zacuto follow focus for buying Zacuto gear with any Zacuto retailer by the end of the year. Just go to Zacuto.com to get some details. On uh, next week's show, we will be talking about electronic art and visualization with Dan Sandin, who developed the Sandin Analog Image Processor. That's Wednesday, December 5th at 11 a.m. CST. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.